Hello, and welcome to the video walkthrough for your NZ or U2U caravan. Attaching and removing the caravan from the car requires the jockey wheel, the handbrake, the hitch lock, the electrical plug, and the safety chain. There is also a red UK safety chain, which you will not need to use. The back of your car should have a tow bar with the appropriate weight rating. If the trailer plug does not reach your car's socket with the appropriate level of slack in its length to allow for turning, we can provide extensions. The handbrake can be disengaged by pressing the button and releasing it downwards and engaged by pulling it upwards. The handbrake must be disengaged for travel and engaged at your campsite. The jockey wheel is used to raise and lower the front of the caravan to get it on and off of the vehicle. The jockey wheel has a wheel, foot, and then the winding lever on the top. A release lever on the side. Before travel, it's important to ensure the handle has been used to tightly wind the foot into the U-shaped receiver. This is so the mechanism does not unwind and the foot does not rotate during travel. Before releasing the jockey wheel, it's important to ensure the caravan is properly attached to the car. Once released, the jockey wheel can be lifted and then locked away for travel. And to attach the caravan from the car, you'll release the jockey wheel, let it fall to the ground, lock it away, and then you will be able to wind the caravan off of your car. The hitch lock must stay on the caravan at all times. Your caravan keys will have two sets, one for the caravan and cupboards on the outside, and one for the hitch lock. The caravan has four stabilizer legs, which must be manually put down whenever it is stationary and detached from the vehicle. The stabilizer legs keep the caravan from moving or tipping up. This can be done by attaching the metal winder to the hexagonal outlets on the caravan and winding them around. Two more legs at the rear of the caravan, which can be accessed from behind. They are also a useful tool for making sure the caravan is level when on uneven ground important to remember to wind the legs back up before attaching the caravan to the car again. All of our caravans have a lounge which can transform into a sleeping area, internal heating and hot water, a bathroom including a shower, and convenience appliances such as plates, cutlery, and cleaning equipment. The functional design of our caravans is identical, so this video is relevant even if you have a different model. All caravans come with fire and carbon monoxide alarms. Your caravan comes with a 12 volt and 240 volt system. The 12 volt system is charged by a solar panel on the roof and primarily powers your lights and 12 volt plugs. One light switch in particular is difficult to find above the seating but not visible while standing. To begin using the powered functions of the caravan, users must First, turn on the appropriate switches on the control panel. This panel is located by the door and has four switches. The top left switch is a general master switch and will need to be on before you can use any powered functions. The top right switch is the pump switch, which will need to be turned on for the fresh water to pull through to the sinks and shower, but should be turned off when there is not a water barrel connected. Bottom left switch is the master light switch. When the main power switch and this switch are on, any individual light switch located within the caravan will turn on the lights for that area. The bottom right switch is the outside light switch and turns off the external light above the caravan's door. It is important to remember to turn this light off at night after it is used. It cannot be seen from within the caravan but will run the caravan's battery. Users can get a battery level reading by pressing the battery display button on the power control panel. If the battery drops below 10 volts, contact us as there may be an issue with your battery. The 240 volt system requires the caravan to be plugged into an external power source, such as a campsite or a house. Your caravan comes with a 240 volt cable, which will fit an approved camping outlet. If you wish to plug into a 3 pin house supply, you will need a special adapter which can be purchased from a camping supplies store or hired from us. This powers the three prong 240 volt plugs, the fridge, the microwave and the Truma heating and hot water system. You can check the caravan is receiving 240 volt power and testing the jug, toaster or microwave. The lights function off the solar powered battery and cannot be used to test if the caravan is plugged in or not. Connecting your freshwater system will supply you with running water to your sinks and shower. To do this, 
you will need your blue fresh water pump and your grey fresh water barrel. Once the fresh water barrel has been filled with clean drinking water, you can drop the end of the blue pump into it and then connect this to the caravan by sliding up the pump shield. It's important to lift the pump shield again before removing the pump. The pumps themselves and their connections can also be round, depending on which model of caravan you have. Turn on the other main power control panel. The sinks and showers should work as normal. The connection between the pump and the barrel can be sealed by stretching the plastic cup over the opening of the barrel. You can fit the handle to the barrel by stretching it to fit over the two knobs either side. It's important to remember your water barrel must be filled from a clean water source free of pollutants or small debris. The caravan can also connect directly to a residential water outlet with an adapter you can buy from a camping supplies store or hire from us. Your caravan comes equipped with a gas bottle and the mechanism which feeds gas to the rest of the caravan. You can set this up like so. First, screw on the gas feed mechanism using the black connector. Once attached, the gas bottle can then be opened to start releasing gas. It's important to check that the yellow valve is open. The gas bottle must be turned off for travel. The gas bottle is held in place by a blue strap. Refilling can be done at many gas stations around the country and there is a fee for returning your gas bottle under the limit. You may also use the swap a bottle program at participating gas stations. The grey water barrel is what collects the runoff of your shower and two sinks. The barrel itself is black and has two lids and two pipes attached to it. The first pipe allows air to leave the grey water barrel so that it can fill more efficiently. You need to check that the end has been removed and that the tap at the base is open, running the same direction as the pipe. The second pipe allows the grey water to flow from the caravan into the barrel. Again, it's important to remember that the tap at the base is open, running the same direction as the pipe. The pipe can be disconnected from the caravan by lifting the two metal wings and pulling the pipe off. There is a cap which can be applied in a similar way for travel to stop grey water filling onto the road. If you suspect a drain is clearing slower than normal, you can fix this by tipping some hot water down the pipe. The waste or black water system of your caravan has two parts, the toilet cassette and the flush tank. The toilet cassette collects the runoff from the toilet. It can be removed by opening this hatch on the side. It should pull out freely as long as the lever on the toilet inside has been closed correctly. The toilet cassette has two wheels and a handle for easier transport around the campsite. To empty your toilet cassette, you will need to find a dump station that allows for the disposal of black water. You will then unscrew the orange flow tube and tip out the content holding the orange air release valve. You can then open the latch and use a hose to rinse out the remaining content. Once empty, the whole system can be placed back inside of the caravan. The toilet cassette chamber must also be returned clean, otherwise an additional cleaning fee will apply. There is a warning light on the toilet inside to tell you when the toilet is full. Should the toilet stop flushing, it's likely you only need to refill the flush tank. This can be done using the hose or bucket under the front seat of the caravan. When using the toilet, we recommend flushing first with the latch closed, using it, and then opening the latch to the content. To open the latch, you move the small grey lever on the side of the toilet around to the right. It's important to ensure the lever is completely closed before removing the toilet cassette on the outside of the caravan. The Truma heating and hot water system which can run off the 240 volt supply while you are plugged in and the gas while you are not. The Truma system can be controlled by rotating and pressing the round dial beneath the screen. The most important icons are the four located across the top of the screen. You can tell an icon is selected when it is flashing. To move to a different icon, you rotate the dial. Pressing in on the dial will take you through to the options for that icon, which you can then scroll through by rotating the dial again. The first icon, shaped like a caravan, controls the heating. Rotating the dial until the icon is flashing and pressing in on the dial to select it will display a range of options including off and different temperatures. The heating system does not cool the caravan and can only raise the temperature. To select 
and activate a temperature choice. You will need to press in on the dial again with the option on screen. You will then be taken back to the main screen where the first icon will now have a flame above it. The second icon, which looks like a thermometer in water, controls the hot water for the caravan. Pressing in while this icon flashes allows you to choose from the options. Off, which turns the hot water generator off. Hot, which sets the hot water temperature to 60 degrees. Pressing in to select one of these options will return you to the main screen, where the second icon will flash until the required water temperature has been reached. The onboard tank can take 23 minutes to fully heat. As the hot water tank is only 10 litres, we recommend leaving a small amount of time between showers. The third option, which looks like a flask with two lightning bolts beside it, controls how the caravan powers the heating and hot water systems. Pressing in on the icon will allow you to choose from five options. However, as a user, you will only need to use two. You will either need the first option, gas, which powers the caravan from an onboard gas bottle, or you will need the last option, electric two, which powers the caravan drawing on 1800 watts from an external 240 volt connection. The fourth icon, in the shape of a fan, controls the speed of the fan which pushes hot air around the caravan. This will automatically switch on in eco mode when the heating system is activated. For faster heating, users can select a faster fan speed, however this will be noisier. Trying to run the heating or hot water system without first selecting how to power them with the third icon can result in a system lockout. The chosen method for powering it must be available, connected and turned on. Where a viable method is not selected, the control panel will display one of the codes E517J, E514H or E507H. If a system lockout occurs, then there are two solutions. For both solutions, you must first turn off the heating and hot water on the panel. Once you have done this, the first solution is to wait until the 15 minute lockout period expires, and the second is to do a manual reset of the system. A manual reset is done by pressing a small switch on the black heating unit under the front right seat. The switch is located to the left of a red light. You must hold the switch down for a few seconds until the light changes. After trying these methods, you should be able to turn on the heating and hot water functions again after selecting either gas or electric too. To transform the lounge at the front of your caravan into a double bed, you need to carefully slide out the bed supports from the, the backrest and the seat for the space. Bedding is only supplied for this front lounge if extra linen is ordered. We provide the option of an ultra soft mattress top but for those who want them. When finished, it's important to carefully and gently slide back the bed supports. In caravans with a fixed style and bed, it can be gently pulled out for extra length. Under the bed is extra storage space and a portable table which comes standard with all caravans. In caravans where the table is not stored under the bed, it is instead stored in a cupboard. Please remember your caravan's bedding is not to be removed from the caravan. We have picnic blankets available for hire. Your caravan comes equipped with a gas grill, stove top, and oven. It's important to remember that to use this appliance, the gas first must be turned on outside. To use the stove top, you must first lift the bench covering and the glass covering. You ignite the stove top by turning the temperature icons round, pressing them in, and then holding the ignite button at the same time. When pressing the igniter in, you should be able to hear it clicking. Sometimes this process can take 10 to 15 seconds if there is no gas yet in the lines. It's important to turn off the stove top before closing the glass and bench coverings. Your caravan's fridge can operate off of a 240 volt supply from your campsite or off of the caravan's gas system. Unlike their UK counterparts, this fridge is unable to run off the car's battery as our trailer plugs do not allow for this. The fridge's most left dial allows you to select how you want to power the fridge. You can use the 240 volt plug, 
you cannot use the battery and you can use the gas connection. To use the fridge while plugged in, it's important to make sure that the caravan's power supply is switched on, the 12 volt system is switched on, and that you have selected the correct temperature. To run the fridge on gas, you must hold in the temperature icon and the fridge's igniter at the same time. When the fridge ignites, the orange indicator will move into the green. This can sometimes take 20 to 30 seconds if there is no gas already in the line. It's important to be patient and continue to hold these two buttons. The door on your caravan locks from the inside and can be unlocked by pressing the lever downwards and locked again by lifting it upwards. All of the windows and skylights in the caravan have blinds, curtains and bug screens. This includes the front door. All caravans have a skylight in the lounge and in the bathroom. Some caravans have an extra skylight in the bedroom. To open them, you click the button at the front to release the handle and slide it all the way across. The skylight can be left half open by allowing it to sit in the tracks halfway across. When closing the skylight, it's important to ensure that the handle lock has been lifted from both sides. The skylight must be closed for travel. The same goes for all windows in the caravan. Before moving the caravan, it's important to ensure a number of things are first secured. This includes the sliding door, which must be pinned from the top and to the bottom, any internal swing doors, the bathroom shower, which must be slid back and closed from the top, any loose or dangerous items which should be packed away so they cannot move, including the fresh water and grey water barrels which should be securely stored up the front of your caravan or in the back of your car, and any cupboards, especially those up high. Nothing heavy should be stored in these cupboards as they can force it open, fall and cause damage. When returning your caravan to us, please make sure you have made us aware of any damages or issues you may have encountered. We ask that your caravan is returned in a clean and tidy state with all rubbish removed. If you find any damage in or on your caravan, it's important that you take a photo and send it to us so that we have a digital record. If you return a caravan with unrecorded damage, you may be responsible for the cost of repair. NZTA will advise of unsafe travel conditions such as high wind. We ask that you comply with their recommendations. The speed limit with the caravan is 90 km an hour. When driving, please be courteous to other drivers and pull over often to allow them to pass and leave extra space while turning to allow for the caravan's long swing. The caravan must only be used on hard sealed roads and is not rated for off-road tracks. The free Campmate app is a fantastic resource for those planning where to stay in their caravan overnight. It has lots of useful information and a range of overnight options. If you have any problems or questions, please check the Frequently Asked Questions page on our website, or you can contact us by phone or email. Please follow all road rules and check your lights before travel. We hope you enjoy your holiday in your NZ4U2U caravan.